Hi, my name is Michael. I work at Roberson Museum and Science Center. One of my favorite things to do in my spare time is read. I like to read books about art, science, and history. Let's read a few of those today. Dr. Seuss's Horse Museum, illustrated by Andrew Joyner. Art, what's it all about? This is what art is about. Art is when an artist looks at something, like a horse for instance, and they see something in that horse that excites them. So they do something about it. They tell you about it in any one of a number of ways. Artists have been excited by horses for as long as there have been artists. But what an artist tells us about horses and how they tell us is different for every artist. What an artist sees in a horse depends on many different things. Their background, likes and dislikes, you name it. So come with me. Let's look at how different artists have seen horses. Maybe we can find some new ways of looking at them ourselves. Look it over, think it over, talk it over. When most people look at me, they just see me like this. But when an artist looks at me, they see a million other things. Can you? Some artists look at a horse and see outlines. To other artists, like this Chinese sculptor, a horse is not an outline at all. A horse is bulk, a solid form. A Japanese artist looked at a horse. What he saw was beautiful lines, beautiful lines from head to tail. Some artists look at a horse and find color. Other artists are interested in shape. This artist looked at a horse and saw strength. These artists looked and they saw speed. A Spaniard named Velasquez painted horses by the dozens. He saw them as something for kings and princes to sit on while he painted them. Velasquez worked for the kings and princes. He never got any money from the horses. This painting is by a Frenchman named Messonnier. Horses to him were something necessary to carry generals into battle. He loved to paint generals going into battle. To him, the horse was a jeep in the days before the jeep was invented. On the rock walls of a cave in France, nearly 22,000 years ago, someone painted this horse by the light of a fire. What did the cave artist see in a horse? We don't know, it's a mystery. What do you think? 2,000 years ago in Greece, artists looked at horses and imagined them with wings. Pegasus was an immortal flying horse in Greek mythology. 
Greek artists painted horses with wings as symbols for ideas, like immortality, that are hard to show in a picture. Five hundred years ago in Persia, people thought a horse was for having fun on. And that's what the Persian artists saw when they looked at horses. Five hundred years ago in Italy, the artist Raphael looked at a horse. He thought a horse was for fighting dragons on. Of course, some artists looked at horses and wanted to paint them just as they appeared in the natural world, doing things that horses really do. We call this kind of art realistic. Other artists looked at horses and tried to capture them in a moment of time. We call this style of art impressionism. Impressionist art often has soft, slightly out of focus appearance. Then we come to what people call modern art. Some people call this crazy stuff. Maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong. But these are paintings, drawings, and sculptures that show what certain artists imagined when they looked at a horse. So please look at them very carefully. There are lots of ways of looking at things. Maybe these pictures have something to tell you. Surrealism is a way of looking at things, including horses, that draws on, in part, an artist's dreams. Dreams can be very strange, and so can surrealist art. Expressionism is an art style that uses exaggerated colors and brush strokes to show the emotion an artist wants us to feel when we look at something. What do you feel when you look at this? Cubism is a way of looking at things from different angles all at the same time. Cubists don't want to copy things the way they normally look. A famous artist named Picasso liked horses. He liked bulls too, and he drew a lot of them. Abstract art can have a subject but it doesn't need one. It uses color and shape to create a visual experience. These abstract images do have subjects. Horses and riders, of course. This artist used just a few lines and splotches of color in this woodcut. But when you look at it, you can see a galloping horse and rider, right? What do you see when you look at branches and driftwood? The artist who made this sculpture saw a horse. This abstract drawing in space shows what looks like a big, strong horse, but you wouldn't want to sit on its back. All it is made of is thin steel wire. Ouch! An American painter named Jackson Pollock found a hobby horse head and glued it onto a canvas before doing this abstract drip painting. Pollock dripped, spattered, and flung paint as a way to insert himself into his paintings. Maybe this is Pollock on a horse. So what do you think? Is this stuff crazy or is it crazy good? Looking at art and thinking about it is fun. 
There's no right or wrong way to do it. Museums are a good place to find art. You can find art in other places too. One such place to look is in books. The horses shown below and to the right are books illustrated by a man who never studied drawing. His name was Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss didn't ride horses, but he looked at them carefully and saw something in them. Can you guess what that something was? So look at that horse once again. A horse is many, many, many things, all depending on what you see. Thanks for reading with me. Next time, you pick a book and find someone to read with. Reading is always more fun together. Enjoy.